Oh, welcome to the Two Big Guys radio talk show between country music artist Glenn Cummings and Pastor Kenneth Farnsworth. Cutting Edge Radio. I'm not the good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're listening to our podcast, this has been a uh, pretty exciting day today. Uh, we have Pastor Kenneth Farnsworth and Pastor Braunmeyer here, and I'm Glenn Cummings, country music artist uh, extraordinaire, as Pastor always says. Yeah, Pastor Braunmeyer is becoming one of our regular guests here. Yeah. And um, gives me a little rest, too. I can ask questions and... and uh, well, it's getting close to the winter months, and, and we know how you are. You hibernate, you eat, and you hibernate for the winter. <laughs> so, you know, he's like one of those big bears, you know what I'm saying? If it's cold outside, he's hibernating somewhere, you know? Well, and, uh, I'm getting ready to sh- hibernate because uh, what we're doing today is our Thanksgiving <laughs> oh, show. Oh, okay. It'll come out the week of Thanksgiving, and I, as, let me see, I've been a pastor for 21 years. <laughs> One year I've been at the church Thanksgiving, and I usually take off, maybe it's pre-hibernation, but I asked pastor to come here because uh, Thanksgiving is around the corner. He's going to be Is there something out. wrong? I have a question. Is there, is there a problem with eating ham instead of turkey for Thanksgiving? That's Theo- just wrong, theologically, or, or yeah, theologically. Or, I mean, because or in culinary you know. circles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I love my turkey, but you know, lately, I'd say the last three to four years, it seems like everybody wants to just go get a ham. You know, and the ham's good, but I like Especially my turkey. Especially if it's a honey baked ham. That's yeah, honey baked ham good. is what uh, we always awesome. get. You know, like last year we were in um, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. In fact, we stayed a little longer because my my car blew up. But we brought back a southern ham, Ooh. and that was good. I, I soaked it in uh, something you probably don't know about, Glenn. Because moonshine, is, moonshine. No, moonshine. No. Oh, okay. Because I mean, that's no. what you get from up there too. No, you know, they, you're hibernating. You're hibernating while yeah, they're cooking the moonshine. They, they, they did have moonshine up there, <laughs> but uh, I soaked it in in a, a northern uh, pop, not soda pop, mm-hmm. called Verner's. I soaked it in Verner's uh, for a few days, mm-hmm. and then I actually. Uh, uh, put it in the oven with some burners in there, and man, it was out of this world. But ham's okay, you know. It, in Christian freedom, you can have ham, turkey, or anything else. Well, good. So basically, uh, you know, why haven't you? I know we always know he gets the little the little pig, you know, and he goes down there and yeah, brings he's it up. That and now, isn't he? Yeah. He's really into that, you know, and he'll he'll you know do all the stuff to it and and put it in its smoker and leave it there for a couple of days. I mean, he goes through the whole ordeal. Why don't you do that with a turkey this year for us, brother? Just I, get get one of those huge, gigantic turkeys. I, I'm on vacation that long. Oh, okay. Figured, figured. Yeah, my, my older kids get very upset when we're not home for Thanksgiving. Pre-hibernation vacation. Yeah, pre-hibernation vacation. <laughs> so. but, but anyways, uh, last year we were in North Carolina. I just got done writing a article for the newspaper up there. Mm-hmm. I am thankful for people from North Carolina. We broke down the very last day. We're heading back. And the I people up that. there were phenomenal, mm-hmm. um, but uh, I just talked to the um, editor of the Mountaineer and uh, sent her my article, and uh, we were very thankful for the help that we got there, and uh, Pastor's going to talk about that in connection with a Bible story that's traditional for our national holiday of Thanksgiving. Pastor, could you share that with them? Yeah, the, <clears throat> the traditional... Uh, gospel reading for Thanksgiving is uh, comes from Luke 17, and it's that passage where uh, Jesus is confronted by uh, ten men with leprosy. Uh, he's going into a Samaritan village. I'm going to kind of paraphrase it for you today. He's going into a Samaritan village, and uh, he's met by ten men with uh, leprosy, and uh, that means they had some form of maybe infectious skin disease or wow. something, and mm-hmm. they could not obviously be part of the society um, because nobody wanted to you know catch what they had it's kind of like kids on the playground with cooties you know <laughs> get, get ready yeah we're gonna ostracize you anyway these guys they were outside the city they couldn't uh you know take part in anything and um so they, they were religiously also considered unclean you know wow and, uh, they had to stay at a distance uh uh, if they got too close to anybody, they ran the risk of uh, somebody picking up a stone and throwing it at them. You know, it's kind of dangerous. Rough back in the days, huh? Oh, Jeez. yeah. You know, no no, uh, 
uh, no health care, that kind of stuff. Right so it's so. kind of like, you know, when Pastor, you know, was in North Carolina, you know, and his uh, engine, uh, you know, went bad, you know, <clears throat> no, but, you know, people would help him. You know, down here in Florida, I've had many trips, you know, that I've got a call. Hey, uh, Glenn, I need some gas. Could you meet me up here at the... You know, I've had those calls, too. I mean, you know, he, oh, he will run his, he'll run, his, he'll run his gas tank down to, you know, when it says 0.01 miles left to go, he'll yeah. he'll drive to Tampa. Yeah, let, it's let like, me, come on. You let know me I mean? explain something here. Jeez. My car, <laughs> uh, my old car, <clears throat> I, I could drive into the gas station and have a half a cup left. This car here has um, computer backup. So when the gas gets low, uh, you can still have gas in there. The computer shuts down the fuel pump, and then you're stuck somewhere. So I ran out of gas in this car 18 times. Yeah, like I said, we get these calls. And, and you know, the last time, Pastor, times. last time he rescued me, but that was the second time in the same day I ran out of gas. The <laughs> so, second time in the same wrong day. With this what happened was is he must have gotten a gallon from somewhere to put in. And yeah, never went to the station to get gas. Right. He just kept driving around. Next right. thing you know, he's out again. I, I put two gallons in, but I was <clears throat> way, way up north of here. And I drove back, <laughs> and I thought I had enough gas to get to the gas station. And I, I was actually across the street from the BP gas station when he came and rescued me. In, in fact, uh, it was the second time that day, and his, his wife didn't believe us. He thought, thought no, maybe. she thought we were up to something because, you know, usually I'd sneak over to pastors. We'd play cards or right, dominoes right, or something. Right, so, gotcha, And gotcha. I would never leave his house till you know, 12, 31 o'clock in the morning. And, and she's like, what are you doing? You know, get home. You know, for a period of time there, I was in trouble all the time over pastors. I'd hang out. We'd play cards. And well, you've got to realize you really will be in a good Samaritan, Glenn. Cause I, you know, that's I mean, what I'm even saying. Even if the BP station was across the road, you might have a hard time walking over there. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Well, you know, the thing about it is, is that, um, you know, his wife, you know, she's the one that beats up on him 10 times worse than any of us could. I mean, mean, the way she rolls her eyes, you know, in church, if he says something, oh, and Tammy over there. And all of a sudden she rolls her eyes and she just keeps a straight face. And I'm just laughing inside saying, oh, Mm. man, pastor is in big trouble when the service is over, you know. Or, uh, but she's, 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 she's a character. She's got to keep him in line. Uh, all of us, all the women keep us in line pretty much. Oh, your, your wife keeps you in line, you know, for real and for true. Yeah. yeah we're still all big kids here pretty yeah. much, but let, let's get back to Thanksgiving. I'm sorry to all take right, us on it, the it, it, unbeaten uh, path once little, again. Little aside there anyway. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, back to our, <laughs> our 10 men with leprosy, uh, outside the Samaritan village and, and, uh, uh, they see Jesus coming and, uh, Jesus obviously got his followers with him probably as well. And, uh, and they, they're just crying out to Jesus, you know, uh, you know, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. They, uh, they want to be uh, healed, and uh, Jesus just looks at them and he says, go show yourselves to the priests, because according to the Old Testament, um, in order to be pronounced clean and able to um, return to regular society, the priests had to take a look at you and say, oh, yeah, it looks like you're, you're, you're fit and you're ready to return to society or not, so... Anyway, these uh, these ten guys they, they they toddle off, as we say in England, they toddled off to the priest and mm-hmm. <laughs> toddled, Aust- Australia, toddled, 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 toddled. England. Oh, England. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's where I'm they. Not do. sure what they do in Australia, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's where they drink tea and they put cream in it. Oh, okay. Gecko. Uh, okay, keep going. Go ahead. Oh, come on. I mean, all right. Anyway, back to all right. The guys they're on their way to the priest and they find out. Wow, they're healed. All ten of them, they're healed, and uh, and then one of them decides, "Well, I'm going to go back to Jesus." And he goes back to Jesus. He falls at Jesus' feet and he thanks him. Hence, Thanksgiving. Oh um, no, I did not know that. Why right, don't I know you, that? Well, anyway, this no guy, one has taught me that. Has, has have well, I learned you, that in you, church? Well, I mean, come have, on. You have to come to church on Thanksgiving to hear that, Glenn. Oh, that's right. Jeez, I'm eating my ham. That's yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm eating my he's ham. He's at home making ham. He's being thankful <laughs> that he's got his daily bread. You know, that, that, that we, is a we, great we story. Had, that is yeah. a great story. So he basically, uh, uh, leprosy was gone. Everything was gone. Falls to his knees and but, thanks Jesus for healing him right and the thing was mm-hmm. is that uh jesus turns around and he's like well we're not all 10 cleansed and that's mm-hmm. the word he actually used cleansed. okay um and and wasn't you know where where are the other nine uh was no one found to return and give thanks but this samaritan and this 
Samaritan was actually a foreigner, you know, he wasn't really a Jew. Uh, and Jesus is like, wow, you know, this uh, somebody who who was not really of Jesus's own race came back and gave thanks. You know, uh, was thankful to him for what he had done for wow. him. Wow. So, um, so basically, he shared dinner, correct, or some type of Thanksgiving, or is that just you know? Where did the dinner come yeah, with the, Thanksgiving? That was that, the Pilgrim's Glen. That's the Pilgrim's Oh, that's the Pilgrim's. Glen. Pilgrim's okay. That's a, that's a few Jeez, hundred years guys. after that. I mean, I, you guys are making it hard for me to follow here. My yeah, goodness. Yeah. Pastor, you see what I mean about country music artists? <laughs> you. You know? I'm glad we do this because we have teachable moments. That's right. <laughs> you know. With country music you know, artists, really, there's a uh, lot of them. This brings up a really, 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 this is getting me scared because, you know, I, I, you mentioned a while, Glenn, that a while ago that my son, you know, he's got his basketball scholarship yeah. to uh, Lipscomb University. His son is six foot ten. Everybody out there, he is the real Mister Big. This guy is yeah, six ten. Uh, dunks the ball over the top of people. He's going to be a great basketball. He already is a great basketball player, but he's going to college now on scholarship, and uh, we're really excited for him. But he's going to Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. Of course, he, he needs to go where you know the music is. I, I, you know, I'm it's a music scared. city. I'm scared. You know? I mean, he's going there to learn stuff. I mean, on the one hand, he's going to be in school uh, playing basketball. On the other hand, so he might funny. be listening to country music. Like, well, what's going to happen know, to my son? You know, it, it talks about cats and dogs, and you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. and then you know what? He Big might, trucks. He, he might meet four a four-wheel drives. He might meet a really pretty girl there, and then when they talk. You go, wow. Yeah, but that southern accent is so cute on 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 mm, those yes. country girls. Come on, you know it is. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, y'all, how are y'all doing out there? Her <laughs> <laughs> her. That wouldn't be too cute, but. Uh. Yeah, anyway, well, okay. So the pilgrims. Let's talk about the pilgrims. Get me. Oh, get me. Don't, get me don't to get me going on the pilgrims. I came from England. I mean. All right, I mean, pastor. Get I us wasn't going on, on the, the pilgrims, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to remember this. This guy was. Part of the rebellion, you know. Oh, yeah, that little rebellion you guys had against, yeah, the colonies, that's right, yeah. yeah. You celebrate that little rebellion on July 4th every year, yeah. right, right, right. But, you know, one of the things that, um, when I when I think about that story of the ten lepers, because I think I only preached on it once, but when we take a look at ourselves and we look at Thanksgiving, uh, that idea of giving thanks, a lot of times, I think there there's a couple of things there that comes into play. There's some people that do things and require to be thanked. But the reality of who we are, as we talked about Sinner and Saint in one of our shows, Pastor, is that aren't we more like the other nine? Yeah, most of the time we're, uh, we're not very thankful, are we? I mean... People I, do. If I had leprosy, I'm sorry, I would be the thankful guy on my hands and knees kissing Jesus' feet. I, I would be. I mean, personally, I think I would be. But like you said, you know, the other nine, or did they, they just expect it? Is that what they did? They just expected they were healed, or they didn't realize Jesus had healed them? You know, I mean, do you think they just didn't realize it? Well, you know. Or they it, thought the priest maybe healed them when they showed up in the, and they showed their skin or whatever they did to the priest you think they, they felt the priest healed them well let me get the example i was talking about okay. earlier you know we we were on our way home from a great vacation last thanksgiving uh, it was friday after thanksgiving and we're coming down the mountain and basically my timing chain broke and it went and ripped my whole engine apart and we're on the side of the road i'm having trouble uh i, I called onstar and they can't pick up the signal on the car to find where I'm at to tell right. tell the towing people. But while we're there, these people are pulling over one after another asking, you know, do you need help? And then um, there was so much help that we got from these people. We go to the hotel. We were so much help for one thing is that we were broke down. And less than an hour later, we were in a hotel. My car was at the dealership. Everything was taken care of. Then I met this gentleman that owned the hotel, and he says, I'm on my way home, but let me take you anywhere you want. You want to go to a restaurant? You want to go shopping? Wow. Whatever you want. And, um, you know, just very helpful. The next day, I, I talked to the dealership down here, a friend of mine, Roger Rivard, and he says, Ken, you have to come home. He says, don't waste your time there. Just come home. There's a lot of repairs that have to go on your car. 
So we went to rent a car. There's no car rentals in the area. The only car rentals are 30 miles away. This man I never met before said, take my car, you and your wife take my car, go to the airport, bring the car back. You don't have to pay for the room. Leave your 18-year-old in there with the kids, and we're going to help you out. So we got that kind of help. Wow. And then uh, uh, the dealership dealership helped us with a bunch of stuff. I had some problems with my, my credit card. I, I carry one credit card, and I haven't rented a car since 1985. So I went to rent the car, and I, I've got a I've got I could a, tell I could tell that yeah yeah I got one hundred and eighty four dollars <laughs> left on my my thousand dollar limit credit card. Oh great! So I go call the airport, and it's like one hundred and eighty seven dollars to rent the car. Oh my! So goodness. I so I call the bank down here, and they I says I just need you to put five dollars on that credit card, and they said well the person who has the authority to do that isn't here today, and I'm going you got to be kidding me. They went and they found a coupon at the airport so I could use my credit card, and we took off. There was so much help there, and I wanted to thank these people. I t- told the guy at the uh, hotel he had some diabetes problems. I was going to send him some cereal, and I'd show him the recipes I had for my diabetes and that kind of stuff. And I just wanted to thank everybody. But what happened? I went three, four, five, six months before I contacted him back. And I wanted to write an article for the newspaper thanking the people of North Carolina being so different than the two states I lived in. Yeah. And and just so helpful. And, uh, you know, we look at that as a risk here in Florida or in Michigan where I'm from in the Detroit area. You know, you don't pull over and talk to strangers because you might get shot. And uh, Or, or, you know, people just, people just, uh, you know, my experience, you know, if a car, you know, stalls in front of you and their hazards are on, people honk at them. Right. And they drive around them. No one wants to pull over. No one right. wants to help them. It's just, there, I don't know what it is. There was so know? many people helping and I should have been like the one leper there and just, you know, praise these people and, and for all they did to me. And I got busy. Yeah. It took me six months uh, to put everything together. I made cereal for... Uh, the hotel guy, I, I sent him a nice card and thank you. Th- and then I was going to write an article for the Mountaineer. I just wrote it uh, two nights ago, and it's almost a year. Wow. Because I got busy with other things. Now, does that mean I wasn't thankful? But I certainly wasn't like you said, you know, if you were healed of leprosy, you'd be the first one up there. Well, sometimes we're not, mm-hmm. you know. and That's a serious, that's a really good example and a really good story. Um, you know, and I know that you were going through a very difficult time just getting your car fixed, you know, under the warranty and all of those different right. things. And you're a family that has a lot of kids. <laughs> you know, you have that one vehicle. Everyone needs that one vehicle is very important to you. And didn't you have someone that let you borrow a truck when you came down here as well? Yep. Yeah, I borrowed the big old diesel truck. <laughs> I mean, this truck he was driving around is what he should have been driving around for years. It's, one, it's like, what is it, a 3500 Dodge diesel? It, it, had, a, it had a Cummings uh, diesel. He, heavy duty thing. diesel truck you know the neat thing about that thing it didn't use any (laughs) diesel it was like you you put ten dollars in it lasts for three weeks really yeah Mm. gas mileage on that thing was phenomenal (laughs) but yeah all the help was there and then um that reminds me too the person who borrowed that i I have three pizzas i told her i'd make her and the dough is actually in my refrigerator see uh, you know it it sounds to (laughs) me like he's not keeping up on his work i I sound like the nine lepers Uh, uh, this is bad this is really bad i mean yeah well meaning uh, i want to say thank you you know just don't have time well see glenn you know we you could be one of the nine lepers i probably you know i guarantee you i have been in the past i mean uh but i you know i try to keep up my word you know i try to but uh Sometimes, you know, like you said, you get busy. I mean, you're, you, you have a thousand people pulling you a thousand different ways. I mean, with my band and, and music and stuff, I have the same thing. Um, <clears throat> but uh, definitely, you know, getting back to Thanksgiving here, I want to know about the pilgrims. What happened with the pilgrims? I want to know where the food came in, <laughs> please. You, you, you have the man from the rebellion on the other side of the pond <laughs> that doesn't want to talk about it, but, you know. Mm. They, they they left the old country and they came here and you know uh, had religious freedom and everything else, and uh, so they got together with 
the Indians, and they they had a nice feast. And all so this was the pil the pilgrims. Yeah, the pilgrims. That's okay, the pilgrims. You know, it's kind of like my family. You know, it's like, my okay. wife is yeah, yeah. is Indian descent, and when we every night it's like Thanksgiving. Well, I'm Hungarian because I'm always hungry. So, uh, <laughs> just kidding. Well, I'm European. I'm from European descent. My wife has uh, Cherokee descent. So every night at our house is like the pilgrims. There you go. Mm. Sounds good. <laughs> if you really want to learn about it now, Glenn, another teachable moment. You know? Okay, I want to hear a teachable right. moment here. We're you supposed know, to be teaching you here. You need to come <clears throat> to school next Friday. Next and, Friday, okay. Uh, I think it's next Friday because uh, our preschoolers do a really, really, really good. <laughs> the, te- the preschoolers are preschoolers oh, teach you about Thanksgiving <laughs> here, Glenn. They put their Thanksgiving uh, hats on. They do their cute. thing, and they have a Thanksgiving dinner and that kind of stuff. And past, pastor walks by and he goes, "Those darn colonists." Oh, <laughs> I know. I actually, I, I appreciate what the preschoolers do. They, 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 they tell the history and. You know, get more dressed up in their little like, you know, pilgrim isn't, hats. Isn't it, and, is, it, 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 for a while there, you know, it really is um, a little disturbing when your kids know more about the Bible than you do. It really is. Because when they're getting taught, I mean, pastor, every, every week you teach Bible study. Right. And one thing I can tell you about pastor's Bible study is, is you better know, you better know what he's teaching you. And if you don't pay attention and you don't learn it, uh, and you don't learn the scriptures the way he teaches them. He's one of the most difficult uh, teachers out there. Uh, and it's Bible him? study. Him. Him? Are yeah. you, well, you're, past, you're, pastor him. teaches seventh grade religion. I teach eighth, and he warns them. Yeah, well, both of you guys are very are really tough on them. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, it's but just... They go from multiple choice and fill in the blank to just write it out. Yeah, that's that's yeah. where the yours is really He difficult. warms them up, and then I He tries to help them. Yeah. Guess what? They're more thankful for me in the end. They that's are right. thankful that's right. for you. They're scared of, of, of Farnsworth when they're yeah. sitting in there. I always and, walk into the seventh grade room <clears> and say, it's going to be worse next year. <laughs> I just, and they all look at him with bug eyes. Yeah. Like, <gasps> yeah, they do. They, they, get, they get scared. I'll never forget. Uh, Lec- uh, Sav- I think Savannah went through confirmation. No, she's going through it now. Yeah, Savannah's in my class. Oh, this is right, scary. Savannah was me. Because I know Lexi year. was su- super nervous. And, yeah, but uh, Lexi was a great student. Yeah. Very good student. Yeah. And uh, we should be thankful for that. Yeah. She worked really hard. and Because uh, we're tough. We, we're, we really do uh, confirmation. We do the questioning everything old school. Yeah, I mean it's not just um, you know write a paper patch on the back and yeah write yeah. a paper how good you feel about God and that's it. But uh, we we teach them the faith and we want them as I always tell them the stuff that Pastor and I are teaching you is eternally important. Yeah, and um, you know you can be thankful for it later on. You might not like it now, but um, you know those are the kind of things to be thankful for. I know my pastor was tough. Mm -hmm. And when I went away to school and I was dealing with all kinds of temptations and everything else, including a young man who was part of a cult, I started repeating what I learned in confirmation dealing with him. And uh, he goes to me one day, he goes, man, you know a lot about the Bible. And I thought, why do I? And I was thankful for the pastor who confirmed Teaching me. You. Yeah, yeah, because it, it yeah, the rubber hit the road. It's what I needed. Yeah. And you know, li- life is, is that way. You know, I think it, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you've got to make uh, the decision to learn something or you've got to make the decision, you know, like talking about going to church. You've got to be disciplined to do it. You know, you you really have to. It's too easy nowadays just to sit back, watch football on TV, mm-hmm watch the news, you know, watch all the horrible things going on in the world. It's too easy to sit back and do nothing. And, and, and instead of getting off your rear end and going to church or going out there to help, yeah, you know, there's so many other things we could be doing, you know, rather than doing nothing, you know. Um, and and the, one, the problem there, though, Glenn, is, is when you, you get into that kind of a mold uh, and, and doing that kind of stuff, it, it tends to be, well, you know, everything in the world is bad I've got nothing to be thankful for. Yeah, you don't. You don't realize your 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 own uh, life is good. <laughs> I mean, you know, right? It's well, like, you know, when I w- broke down there on the road, I was like, you know, when when I used to go to New York and hitchhike all over the place, I, I only had to worry about myself. But I'm sitting there, and you, when you have something 
not work and that's taking you somewhere and you got all these other kids you finally appreciate what you got yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. you know and we're coming back to that uh that whole passage there in in luke 17 with jesus and the 10 lepers um the 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 one samaritan guy came back and he came to where jesus was at and he gave thanks you know he came to him he 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 fell down at his knee and fell down before jesus and and thanked him and uh and, and the thing is is that we in the church don't just give thanks once a year i mean we just don't we give thanks every time we go to church mm-hmm, absolutely because that's where jesus is and that's where he comes to us he gives us what we need uh, forgiveness of sins etc cetera, etc cetera. and we say thank you mm-hmm. right that's our thanksgiving yeah yeah we have a weekly thanksgiving daily thanksgiving you know, so that's it for us. Pilgrims aside, do, does do they have Thanksgiving in England? No, but they do in Canada. They do in Canada. <laughs> yeah, I, I know because I, I used to go to Canada for Thanksgiving when I lived in Michigan, and I always had to remind the chef in the hotel we were staying in, "Hey, American wait, no, no, Thanksgiving wait, 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 is tomorrow." Wait, 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 Thanksgiving in England, it rains all the time. Yeah, I don't think I'd be thankful for the. Well, I guess we should be thankful for rain, we but not be all thankful the time. For everything, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, in England they were they weren't so happy because, you know, they thought they had another land they had conquered, and we rebelled. We planted colonies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, they planted right. colonies, and you know, oh. we we told you to take your red coats and go back home. You know, <laughs> and, and just if yeah, you ironic. Can only see the look on my face right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with that accent, aren't you from Australia? Oh, that's right. <laughs> no, he, I he, am thankful. He's going to pick up something here. And he's going to throw thankful. it at you. There's a guitar over here. Don't use a guitar to whack him with it, please. I am please. thankful for <laughs> my upbringing, where it was, in England. Yeah. In England. So, you, know, you know, Glenn, the, the USA and Australia have something in common. Okay. We both used to belong to England, and Ooh. we escaped. <laughs> oh, well, you know, oh, you guys escaped. The you know, yeah, Australia just got their, oh, their independence funny. because you know I don't know if you've heard of ever heard of that phrase "pommy." That's what they call Australians. Pommy, P O M E, stands for Prisoners of Mother England. Oh. That's where England sent all their prisoners. <laughs> no yeah. disrespect. So funny. See, my sister's listening to this. She lives in Australia right now. Sorry, uh-oh, that's what I mean. uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> see. In My nephew's Aust- in Australia right now, too, so yeah. he's probably listening. In Australia, they were real prisoners. In America, they were just religious prisoners in England. Uh-huh. So, but the ironic thing about the pilgrims, what they left, they became. They, they left uh, um, you know, not being able to uh, worship the way, the way they wanted to, and, and as time went on, they became just like what they left, very pietistic and... All kinds of rules, and if you don't follow uh, the way the church does it here, you know, you're you're going to be in the stockades or wow. digress even from there. Mm-hmm. So this Thanksgiving, guys, what are the <clears throat> things that you're thankful for? You know, uh, you know, let's let's all have uh, two or three things, and we'll uh, end our segment here because I know we're at our at our time limit. Uh, but what are two things that you're thankful for? I mean, I know you could say a lot of them, but this year, you know, this year, what are you thankful for? Oh, Pastor I got, B, I, I, I mean, I've been, uh, as you know, Glenn, I've been doing cartwheels and um, just <laughs> yeah. smiling, proud and, dad, and being so proud right now and, uh, of my of my son George and the fact that we went through a uh, a really rigorous evaluation time for basketball scholarships. We we uh, we sat and talked with uh, twenty uh, coaches, eleven of which were head coaches. Wow. Uh, and then we uh, we got through this evaluation period. And, you know, George had a total of, of 10 full basketball scholarships. Wow. Offers. And, uh, and uh, he chose this one because uh, he chose Lipscomb in Nashville because um, great academics. Um, uh, they have the basketball is their go-to sport. They don't have uh, football. So, uh, and I'm just thankful. Because now George is going to be able to go somewhere and get a great education, and he's going to get a scholarship for it. And I'm so thankful that we don't have to feed him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it's like trying to feed 
a kid uh, that's six foot ten? No, I know. I I, I, mean, I, I just like, like him. He's just like me. I mean, uh, and the thing I can tell you about about your son is, uh, at his age, just by talking to him, you know, because you know he helps uh, tutor my wife with her college uh, courses, which is pretty funny. Uh, but he's 25, 30 years old. I mean, mentally. I mean, he's so far above, you know, a teenager. It's just amazing. Yeah. He's that he's he's that sharp, and he knows where he wants to go. He he's driven, uh, you know. And I and I I, pr- I pry him a little bit, you know. So tell me about the girls in school. I'm keeping away from them. You know, he he's driven. He he's not going to let anything mess with his path that he's going down. And uh, you know, I'm really I'm really proud of him. You know, I'm I'm, I'm proud of him because I've seen him since he was just a. A young skinny kid, and now he's this big, huge kid. You know, and so, uh, you know, I I say, I, you know, I'm really thankful for that. Obviously, I'm thankful for my other kids. I, you know, I love Charlie a lot. He's he's a hoot. Charlie's come a long way too. He's come a long way. Long Annie, way. Annie, she's just growing up right now. So Annie's I'm, becoming a young lady. I'm just yeah. I'm just thankful for uh, you know my family and where we're at right now, and um, uh, and it's just a, a really exciting time for us. Yeah. You know, really as a whole family too. Yeah. Pastor Farnsworth? Yeah. You know, um, I think about this. I just got done writing that article for the Mountaineer, which I was thankful for everything that happened there. But last few weeks, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff, and, and, and I think about it, you know, really thankful for the family and kids. And you know, I have kids that are 24 years apart, but <laughs> Pastor's got three kids. And I think what's unique about kids that are pastor's kids is a lot of times they're known for <clears throat> the trouble they cause. Mm-hmm. You know, um, some of them end up on TV and, 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 sure, and sure. go uh, blatantly um, against what they were taught. You know, Sam Kinison, who used to be a preacher when he was young, and then uh, who's the Sam Kinison of today? Uh, he went to the University of Central Florida, Tosh. I think is his name is he, he and, and just speaks out against Christianity. One thing that's unique about pastors, kids, and my kids, especially the older ones, they they they, I don't think they get in any big trouble. At least that we're not aware of. No, they're they're no. I know all the good and all the bad. No, but but they're, know, they're they're confe- good kids. Yeah, they they're, really they're are. confessors of the faith, and and you know you want to see that as a pastor because there's the you know, sort of the cliche or the stereotype of pastor's kids, you know, just cause trouble and everything else. And, and it's neat to see them stand up for the faith. George, very much so. And my, yeah. my daughter, Sasha, and um, that their Christianity is really a part of their life and it's important to them. And, and I'm thankful for that because, boy, the yeah. things that Pastor and I deal with and have to deal with uh, and have dealt with over the years – you know, sometimes you just want to go home and hug your family. Well, you know, and the other thing is, too, is, uh, you know, uh, NASA is doing fantastic. I mean, this girl at 21 years old is, is you know, an assistant manager of, of, a, uh, of a Publix now. I mean, you know, in, enrolled yeah, in the 401k plan. I mean, uh, you know, Krista, Krista went through a really difficult, you know, couple years here. Yeah, we almost know, lost her. Almost lost her, and, and now she's back healthy and doing well, and, uh, and your your youngest daughter, Michaela, she is singing beautiful in church. Your I mean, voice uh, is maturing a lot. Yeah. You know. I mean, so, you know, you have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, on my end, same thing. It's just the family. Uh, both the girls are doing well. Uh, you know, both of them are, are singing uh, all the time. Uh, you know, my wife's in college. This year was one of, you know, it was a rough year, you know, uh, for me personally, just trying to get this this very uh, difficult license with my financial services business, uh, trying to pass that stupid test. Uh, you know, it's been a rough year, you know, with some things, uh, you know, with, with a wife full-time in school, uh, getting kids back and forth to school. You know, it's, it's been one of those rough years, but um, it's been a blessed year. I mean, this year, 2014 coming up, the band already has, you know, 14 confirmed dates. Mm-hmm. Uh, you cool. know, last night uh, we have a confirmation to, to do a show uh, for the Charlie Daniels event. Oh, cool. uh, we have another show coming up. Uh, it's, a, it's a, you know, big headlining show. Uh, so, I mean, things are looking really well for us. And uh, I'm so, blessed. So, I'm blessed. Um, you, you know, Charlie Daniels, uh, if, I, if, I, if I'm 
correct. He, he's a Christian man. Absolutely. So you're going to get us an interview with him here on the yeah, Too Big a Way Show? I, <laughs> I, think, I think honestly that, uh, you know, he's, he's still out touring. I know he had a stroke, I think it was a year or so ago, yeah. that kind of sidelined him for a little while. But that guy there will run you in the ground. He is the he, best he, performer. I mean, yeah. full speed, 100 mile an hour. Uh, good Christian guy. The Angelus is, is the benefit that, that I'm going to be a part of. Right. Uh, uh, you know, special needs, you know, uh, uh, residents of this yeah. facility uh, need money and, and funding. So he always does that every year. Uh, but I'd love to get him on, when, on the yeah, show. Yeah, that'd us. be cool. You know, when Tammy's grandmother died, we were on our way to Murrah, Kentucky, as they say it there, or Murray, mm-hmm. as the rest of us say it. And they had a big music event there out in the middle of nowhere. And we, we had we waited in Nashville to move in and get everything ready for the funeral. And we stayed at the Hawthorne there in Murray. And Charlie Daniels was there. Wow. And he was there that morning. And just a real guy. Just, just goes around, talks to everybody, shaking everybody's hand. Just walked around the hotel like, you know, he knew everybody. And, and, and a good Christian man, too. Yeah. Well, guys, now, they, uh, I'm going to wrap this up yeah, with one please, more thing, please. and Go I ahead. think Hoster will agree with me. Like, <clears throat> um, just, this just kind of popped in my head because people are going to be listening to this. And uh, uh, as I told people before, I've been in one, two, three parishes before I've been at Emmanuel. And I think that I'm really thankful for Emmanuel. Yeah. yeah. Because it is me a, too. a great congregation. Uh, it's a great congregation to serve. Uh, they probably... Um, in compar- um, I hate comparing, but in comparison to the par- other parishes that I've served before, this is probably one of the, the is the most loving parish out there. Right. And and we get a school, which makes it so cool, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Ki- kids are always around, and, and it's just wonderful having them. And uh, we, we're thankful for our manual. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone, thank you so much uh, for listening to our show here. Pastor, do you want to give them the... Uh, two big guys Facebook uh, so they can give us comments yeah we, we want to encourage you to if you are a Facebook person to go to facebook.com forward slash the number two big guys or you can go to godsolove.org make comments on the show questions or suggestions even for future shows we, we've got quite a few shows done right now but we're always looking for ideas and uh, go ahead there uh, again facebook.com forward slash the number two big guys happy thanksgiving everyone have a blessed thanksgiving thank you thank you guys